Hey there, today we're diving into the history of cruise ships. We're going to check out how these floating hotels have changed over the years and made sailing the seas a whole different ball game. So buckle up and let's cruise through the evolution of these ocean adventures. Back in the mid-20th century, cruise dining was like a military operation. Everyone had a specific time and table. It was all structured and formal. But now, things have flipped. Modern cruise dining is all about freedom. You eat when you want, where you want. No more strict schedules. Cruise lines realized people dig flexibility, so they made dining a laid-back, do-it-your-way kind of deal. The old-school dining setup had its charm, but it was a flop because folks wanted more freedom. People got tired of being tied down to a set time and place. They wanted to chill on their own terms. So cruise lines had to adapt. The formal dining thing lost its appeal when everyone started craving a more relaxed vibe. Flexibility won over the structured scene, and that's why the old way of cruise dining took a nosedive. Back in the day, cruise dinners were all about suiting up. Formal attire was the deal, fancy dresses, suits, the whole shebang. But times change, man. Nowadays, cruise lines got with the program. They realized people don't always want to dress to the nines on vacation. So they introduced this thing called casual elegance. It's like looking good without feeling like you're going to a wedding. Passengers can keep it chill while still being presentable. The whole mandatory formal dress code got the boot because honestly, people just wanted to relax. Not everyone's up for dressing like they're hitting the red carpet every night. Cruise lines figured out that letting folks be a bit more casual made the whole dining experience more enjoyable. It flopped because the old school fancy vibe didn't jive with the laid back crowd. Casual elegance became the new cool. And that's how the story goes. Once upon a time, shipboard libraries were a big deal. Book lovers found their slice of heaven there, flipping through actual pages. But then, the digital age hit. E-readers and Wi-Fi came into play, changing the game. Now, folks can carry a whole library in their pocket and get online whenever. The shipboard libraries bit the dust because, well, who needs shelves of books when you got everything in a little gadget? E-readers made lugging around paperbacks seem old school. Plus, with Wi-Fi everywhere, why chill in a library when you can Google anything from the deck? The charm of a physical library lost out to the convenience of digital everything. People swapped hardcovers for e-books, and shipboard libraries became relics of the past. That's the story, plain and simple. Back in the day, cruise ship entertainment was all about magicians pulling rabbits out of hats and cabaret acts lighting up the stage. But times changed, man. People's tastes evolved. And now, it's all about high-tech, flashy production stealing the show. Traditional acts took a hit because, let's face it, we got hooked on high-tech stuff. The charm of a good OL magic trick wore off against dazzling lights and crazy special effects. Folks wanted more than card tricks. They wanted jaw-dropping, futuristic spectacles. Cabaret couldn't keep up with the allure of high-tech productions. So, the old-school entertainers had to take a back seat. It's a tech-driven world, and that's why magicians and cabaret acts kind of faded into the background on the cruise scene. Just the way it goes. Back in the day, cruise life was a bit different. You needed coins for showers and even radios. Crazy, right? People were cool with it because that's just how things rolled. It was like paying your way through basic cruise comforts, but then tech got fancy and cruise packages went all-inclusive. No more digging for coins just to get clean or listen to tunes. The shift happened because folks wanted hassle-free cruising. Why bother with coins when everything's bundled up? So, those coin-operated machines got the boot. It's like saying goodbye to an old-school vending machine. Times change, and so does the way we cruise. Just the way the cookie crumbled. Shuffleboard used to rule the decks, folks loved it. Simple game, easy to pick up. A classic, people could relax and have a good time with it. No big deal, just shuffling those discs around, you know? But here's the deal cruise lines got fancy. They threw in rock climbing walls, water parks, all kinds of modern stuff. Shuffleboard started feeling kinda outdated. People wanted more excitement, not just sliding pucks. It took a backseat to the newer, flashier activities. So shuffleboard faded away like an old trend. Not because it was bad, just lost its shine in the face of all the new high energy options. That's how the game got shuffled out of the spotlight. 
Back in the mid-20th century, sailing the seas meant dealing with paper charts and figuring out where you're at using the star's celestial navigation. They called it, it was the norm, the way folks kept their ships on course, no high-tech stuff, Fast forward to the 21st century and bam, GPS and fancy tech took over. No more wrestling with paper charts or squinting at the stars. GPS made navigating a piece of cake. It flopped because, let's be real, who wants to go old school when you've got a satellite telling you exactly where you are? Technology outpaced those traditional methods and they became like dinosaur relics in the modern navigation game. It's all about ease and precision these days. That's how the sea charts and celestial navigation bit the dust. Once upon a cruise, bingo was the main squeeze. Easy, fun, and everyone could join in. People liked the thrill of those little numbered balls rolling around, trying to score a win. It was like the OG game on board, but then came the entertainment revolution. Cruise lines stepped up their game with casinos, interactive shows, and digital gaming bingo got overshadowed. Folks craved more than just numbers being called out. They wanted flashy lights, bells ringing, and all that jazz. Traditional bingo couldn't keep up with the glitz and glam of the new options. So, it kinda faded into the background. It's not that bingo was bad, just got outshone by the bigger, flashier players in the cruise entertainment scene. That's the bingo story, folks. Once upon a sea voyage, radiograms were the real deal. They were like the texting of the ocean, letting ships talk to folks on land. People relied on them to stay connected. Slow but the best they had back then. Fast forward to now, and we got satellite communication and internet everywhere. Radiograms were slowpokes in a world that wanted things quick. Nobody's got time for waiting around for messages. Satellites made communication lightning fast, and the internet, well, that's a game changer. Radiograms just couldn't keep up with the need for speed. So they faded away like an old radio signal lost at sea. It's not that they were bad, just got left behind in the wake of faster, modern tech. That's how the radiogram story rolls. Shipboard post offices were the real deal back in the day. People needed a way to send mail during their voyages. And these floating post offices were the solution. It was practical, you know? You're on a ship, far from home, and you want to shoot a letter back to your folks or friends. Shipboard post offices made that happen, connecting people even on the high seas, Fast forward to the digital age, and bam email, social media, all that jazz took over. Snail mail got slower compared to the speed of digital communication. Nobody's waiting around for letters when you can shoot a message across the globe in seconds. Shipboard post offices couldn't keep up with the need for instant connection, so they kinda sailed off into the sunset, overshadowed by the faster, digital ways of staying in touch. That's how the shipboard post office story goes. As we cruise into the future of sailing, it's good to remember the old cruise traditions while getting on board with the new stuff that makes each trip stand out. Born Voyage, Adventurers, 